There was a time when the name Foden meant power, pride and British engineering at its best. These were the trucks that didn't just haul loads, they carried the weight of a working nation. For decades, Foden trucks were the backbone of British haulage. Built in Sandbach, Cheshire by men who lived and breathed diesel, they had a reputation for being tough, loud and unbreakable. But in the late 1970s, something changed. Foden decided to gamble its future on a new kind of engine, a two-stroke diesel that promised to rewrite the rules of trucking. It was bold, it was ambitious, and it would nearly destroy the company that built it. To understand how it happened, you have to remember what the industry looked like at the time. The oil crisis had hit, fuel prices were through the roof, and new emissions rules were on the horizon. Every truck maker was looking for better fuel economy and more power from smaller engines. Foden had built its success on traditional Cummins and Gardner engines, slow revving, rock solid and loved by drivers. But those engines were old school and management wanted something that would push the company into the future. Enter the two-stroke diesel experiment. Unlike the standard four-stroke engines everyone used, a two-stroke fired every revolution. That meant more power from less weight, quicker response and smoother torque. On paper, it was perfect. The kind of breakthrough that could have given Foden a real edge. The design they chose came from America, the Detroit Diesel 6V71. Compact, lightweight and used in everything from buses to tanks, it seemed ideal for a new generation of British trucks. The first prototypes looked promising. The engineers at Sandbach worked day and night to adapt the American design to British standards. They fitted it into the new S80 and S90 series, calling it the Foden Two-Stroke. When journalists tested it, they couldn't believe the power. It revved higher, pulled harder, and sounded like nothing else on the road, a deep mechanical snarl instead of the slow thump of a gardener. For a moment, it looked like Foden had built the future, but out on the road, the honeymoon ended fast. The engine was powerful, yes, but it drank fuel like a sailor. The two-stroke's constant firing meant it used nearly twice as much diesel as a four-stroke at cruising speed. It also needed constant maintenance. The oil system had to be perfectly balanced, or it would foul the cylinders. Mechanics who were used to the simple, steady gardeners were suddenly dealing with a high-strung, finicky engine that hated being ignored. For long-haul drivers, it was a nightmare. Then there was the noise. The Foden two-stroke screamed like a jet engine at full throttle. On a motorway, it could be heard half a mile away. Drivers joked that you didn't need a radio. The engine played its own music. Some loved it, but most didn't. It wore you down. Hours behind the wheel felt like sitting inside a factory turbine. Fleet owners started sending them back, calling them unreliable and expensive to run. Foden's engineers tried everything. They tweaked fuel maps, adjusted injectors, even added extra cooling to tame the heat. But the problem wasn't tuning, it was physics. Two-stroke diesels just weren't built for long-distance trucking. They were brilliant in tanks, marine engines, and stationary power units, but on the open road, they struggled to stay efficient. Every mile cost too much and every repair cost more. By the early 1980s, the experiment had turned into an embarrassment. Cummins and Rolls-Royce powered Fodens were still running strong, but the two-stroke models were being pulled out of service across the country. Some companies even scrapped them early, saying they were too much trouble to fix. The drivers who'd once sworn by Foden were switching to Volvo and Scania, chasing reliability over nostalgia. The two-stroke gamble hadn't just failed, it had stained the brand's reputation. Inside the company, the fallout was brutal. Money had been poured into developing the engine and it never came back. Foden was already struggling to compete with the European giants and this disaster tipped the balance. Orders fell, debt climbed and the confidence that had once defined the company evaporated. The same management that had taken a bold risk now looked lost. It was the beginning of the end. By the mid-1980s, Foden had no choice but to retreat. The two-stroke program was scrapped quietly, never mentioned again in brochures or adverts. New trucks went back to Cummins and Perkins Power, but it was too late. The trust was gone. The British haulage world had moved on and Foden was left chasing it. Yet, the story of the two-stroke engine wasn't just about failure. It showed how desperate Britain's truck makers had become to find an edge, how they were willing to gamble everything in a market that no longer played fair. Foden's engineers weren't lazy. They were visionaries stuck in a system that couldn't afford to let them fail. 
And when they did, it wasn't just a bad engine that died, it was the last spark of the old Foden spirit, that fearless belief that British trucks could lead the world. For the few who ever drove one, the memory still lingers. That wild scream of a two-stroke Foden climbing through the gears, fast, furious and doomed from the start. When the two-stroke project collapsed, the damage inside Foden was deeper than anyone admitted. Engineers who'd spent years on the design watched their work vanish overnight. Dealers refused to stock the parts, and fleet owners demanded refunds or replacements. The press that once praised the truck now mocked it as a noisy mistake. The company didn't just lose money, it lost faith. And once that happens, in the trucking world, it's almost impossible to win it back. Foden tried to move on fast. They went back to what they knew, solid, dependable four-strokes. The new S10 series was fitted with Cummins power and management promised the two-stroke disaster was behind them. But the damage was already done. The word Foden no longer meant unbreakable. It meant unreliable, experimental, and outdated. Truckers who'd once sworn they'd never drive anything else were now climbing into Volvos and Scania's because they just worked. The market around them wasn't slowing down either. Europe's truck makers were eating Britain alive. Volvo had their F10, Scania had the 1 and 12, and Mercedes was making trucks that felt like luxury cars compared to what came out of Cheshire. These were smooth, quiet, and built for long-haul comfort, the exact opposite of the raw, rattling machines Foden still produced. British industry had fallen behind and nobody seemed able to stop it. Inside the Sandbach plant, the atmosphere turned heavy, production lines slowed, orders dropped, mechanics who once worked overtime now stood by half-empty bays, management meetings turned tense, filled with talk of cutbacks and restructuring. The engineers kept fighting, bringing out updates, polishing old designs, but the confidence was gone. The people building the trucks knew it. The men driving them knew it. Foden wasn't leading the pack anymore. It was just trying to keep up. By the mid-1980s, the cracks were showing everywhere. Leyland, ERF and Foden, three great British names, were all struggling to survive. The European competitors were building thousands of trucks a year. Foden was barely producing a fraction of that. The company needed help, and fast, so they looked for it overseas. That help came in 1980 when Packard, an American giant that owned Kenworth and Peterbilt, bought Foden. It sounded like a lifeline, fresh money, new management and global connections. The workers hoped this was the moment Sandbach would roar again. For a while, it looked promising. Investment came in, new tooling arrived and a few fresh models rolled off the line but the heart of Foden, that small proud British soul, was slowly being replaced by corporate order. Packer wasn't sentimental. They didn't care about heritage or reputation. They cared about profit, and that meant cutting costs, streamlining production, and focusing on what sold. Over time, Foden became less of a brand and more of a badge. Cummins engines were now standard, the old British parts were phased out, and the iconic hand-built feel was gone. The trucks were still good, but they didn't feel Foden anymore. They felt American. Meanwhile, the ghosts of the two-stroke years still haunted the company. The failed experiment had drained money that could have modernized the factory. The lost customers never came back. And in the industry, reputation moves slower than steel. Once it rusts, it's almost impossible to polish clean. Foden's trucks might have been solid again, but nobody was lining up to take a risk. The trust that built a century of success had been burned by one engine that promised too much and delivered too little. Through the 1990s, the name lingered on, but the fire had gone out. The last generation of Foden trucks, strong, clean, efficient, were technically fine, but they were shadows of the old days. The noise of the workshops faded. The pubs around Sandbach that once filled with drivers every night grew quiet. The world had moved on to DAFs and Scania's and the last of the old Foden fleet was aging fast. By 2006, Packer finally made it official. The Foden name was retired. The last truck rolled off the line and left Sandbach wearing a badge that meant almost nothing to the modern market. There were no cheers, no ceremony, just silence. A company that had once built trucks for kings, armies and industry had vanished. The two-stroke engine wasn't the only reason Foden fell, but it was the moment the fall began, the point where confidence cracked and the legend started to fade. What should have been their bold leap into the future became the experiment that defined their end. The engine was fast, powerful and ahead of its time, but it didn't belong on Britain's roads. 
Ask any old driver about Foden's two-stroke today and you'll get the same answer. It sounded brilliant, it went like hell, and it killed the company that built it. 